Growing your business can mean big time logistical questions, like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then, drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com. A meal can change a day, a dream, a life, a future. It can feed hope, optimism, passion, purpose. It can be the difference between giving up and giving it everything. A meal to those who are hungry is everything. And right now, one in eight Georgians are in need. Donate to the Atlanta Community Food Bank, where every dollar donated can turn into three meals. Visit acfb.org to help end hunger in Georgia. Atlanta Community Food Bank. Every meal matters. In Austin, Texas, a police officer along with two hostages are dead after a hostage situation takes a horrible turn. In Ruston, Louisiana, four people are stabbed in an attack at Louisiana Tech University. And in Florida, a man is arrested after the murder of his ex-girlfriend who filed a police report against him the same day. These stories and more coming at you today, Wednesday, November 15th on Real Life Real Crime Daily. And I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Mike Agavino. And we're here together. (laughs) And to tell you the truth, we don't have a clue where's where our wingman is. It's where instead of where's Waldo, it's where's Woody. I have some theories. I'd love to hear them. Well, we know Woody left to head here. So it starts with the assumption he's in transit. So he may very well show up during the course of this episode, but he's not here right now and we couldn't wait any longer to get going. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking he could have hit an animal. That's possible. And if he, let's hope not. If he did, he would have to clean it and he'd have to set it up to eat. Yeah. He'd have to hang right? it. Well, he'd have to hang it and all that in his cooler. Right. So he'd go through that whole process mm. and we would be the last priority in terms of communicating that he's not going to, he's not going <laughs> to oh, get 100%. here on time if that happened. So that could be it. He could have found uh, like a stray otter or something. Yeah, or and, got bit by a or got rabbit bit, otter. Uh, poisoned by a platypus. Yeah. Any of those things are possibilities. Shark attack. Here's my number one though. I think he finally figured out or got uh Login credentials from somebody for OnlyFans, and mm. he is on a couple of Missouri teachers' pages <laughs> right now, pulled over on the side of the road, and he has lost track of time. It's, <laughs> That's my prediction. It's possible as well. Well, maybe well, he'll show up during the show, but we're gonna we're gonna keep you entertained until then. We wouldn't joke, folks, if we weren't more than reasonably certain he's fine. Yeah. Um, so uh, we are reasonably certain he's fine, but hopefully he will uh, he will be in here in the next little bit. That's but the show right. must go on, as they say. And we're going to start in Texas today. A Texas officer and a and a barricaded armed suspect were killed Saturday in a shootout. Austin uh, interim chief of police Robin Henderson brought this news and and basically the gist of this y'all is two hostages were found dead and another officer was injured and in addition to the uh, police officer being killed early saturday morning a woman called 911 screaming for help and saying that someone stabbed her uh, officers arrived at the home just before 3 a.m and were told two other people were injured inside A woman who escaped the house was found nearby and told authorities the suspect had a knife. She was taken to the hospital for treatment. As officers forced their way inside, the suspect fired at them. Uh, Henderson, the chief, uh, said the officers backed out of the residence and did not shoot back at that time. At 3.06 a.m., because the suspect was armed and barricaded inside the residence and had two hostages, The SWAT team was called out. 
At approximately 4.11 p.m., SWAT officers arrived on the scene and they forced entry into the residence a second time to rescue the victims. The suspect immediately fired guns at the officers and the SWAT officers returned fire. Two officers were struck during that shootout. They were taken to the hospital. One died and one was reported in stable condition. The suspect died at the scene. Two people were found dead in the house, and it wasn't clear. It's not clear yet how they died. The fallen fallen officer has been identified as George Pastore. Pastore uh, joined Austin Police in 2019 as part of the 101st Cadet Class. He was commissioned as a patrol officer in 2020 and also served in the uh, in the Dallas Police Honor Guard. He was a SWAT Gold Team member and also was Counter Assault Strike Team certified and Special Response Team certified and a member of those teams uh, as well. Pastore is survived by his wife. He had two stepsons. Uh, his parents are both still alive and his two sisters. So our hearts go out to uh, obviously this officer and all officers who were killed in the line of duty. Look, it, such a dangerous job, but especially when you are a member of those special response teams, when they have to go out, it's serious. And it's usually somebody that's not afraid to shoot at the police. Well, you reading his resume, I mean, he sounds like he was a badass. Yeah. And so uh, they must have been up against a guy that uh, had some you know major skills himself to, you know, to to be able to have uh, to have, you know, uh, gotten those shots off and and. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's mm. just you. You have a guy. Maybe they don't. They don't know that there isn't anyone alive in the house because if they know no one's alive in the house, they can probably storm it. You know, with uh, you know a minimal chance of somebody getting injured on yeah. the, on their side. I don't. I don't know. But it, well, you definitely have to take more ca- caution when you think those hostages are still alive and. You know, whereas if you just went in there and it was you knew the hostages were already killed, you could kind of you could just go crazy in there. And and, uh, it probably would have been an easier situation to deal with, to say the least. Uh, But, man, you know, all of these officers and I know we've got a lot that listen to our show uh, and they've got families and this guy had a family. And, uh, you know, you just don't know if you're coming home that day. And, and what a, what a, uh, you know, we, we feature what we call, uh, cop heroes on this show and, um, super cops. And they really are because, you know, most people leave, they go to work and all they got to worry about is, you know, podcasting or, or laying pipe or whatever it is you do for a living. Uh, these guys got to worry about getting shot at. And so. Well, well, and there are all kinds of this new types of crazy bad guys out there. Yeah. Uh, stuff that they're probably seeing things today that they've not seen in the 15, 20, 30 years. Somebody might have been on the uh, the force. It's harder than it's ever been for these guys. It really and, is. Uh, very unfortunate. Well, a story that kind of ties into that because increasingly as the uh, police are are challenged with the downsizing of some of these police forces uh, with the increased amount of time it takes uh, response time to uh, uh, to respond to a 911 call uh, and frankly uh, more and more hate being spread around the country on a variety of fronts a lot of people are taking uh, their own personal safety into their own hands yeah. Um, and we have a story, in New York, about uh, a guy who uh, who maybe went a little bit too far with that. We'll see what you think when we when we get into this story. A vigilante gunman was arrested. This happened on Wednesday of last week, uh, and surveillance video emerged. Which I remember last episode you brought up, Jim. That what about cameras in the in the subways? Mm-hmm. This was a situation where they actually had 
video footage in the subway because it was a major station that they were at. And I think some of the stations have them and some of them don't. But uh, this uh, uh, the vigilante was arrested Wednesday as surveillance video emerged showing him open fire in a Manhattan subway station in what officials called a, quote, outrageous and reckless attempt to thwart a robbery. This guy's name is John Rote, 43 years old, lives in Astoria, Queens. He was taken into custody at his Manhattan job in the afternoon on Wednesday. Witnesses and police said that the chaotic ordeal began when a guy by the name of Matthew Roche, a 49-year-old homeless man, held the emergency gate open for a 40-year-old woman at the Midtown subway station. When she tried to walk through, he blocked her way and demanded money from her. Quote, if you don't give me a dollar, I'm going to take your purse, Roche said, according to police. She refused, and Roche began screaming at her. Cops said Roche warned the panhandler to leave the woman alone, and witnesses told officers that he then whipped out a gun and yelled, get away from her. Roche was arrested after he was recognized and reported by someone who saw the footage and knew him. Mm. Roche, who has no priors, was charged with criminal possession of a weapon, criminal possession of a firearm, reckless endangerment, and menacing, according to the NYPD. The chilling video shows the suspected gunman spot the would-be mugger, Roche, trying to forcibly snatch the 40-year-old woman's belongings at the 49th Street Station. Roche slowly takes off his backpack and reaches inside to whip out a handgun, which he raises and nonchalantly fires off uh, into the air. You can't see the, the scuffle that's going on as he's firing because uh, Roche and the woman are, are out of the picture. He then begins yelling at Roche while inching closer um, to the two of them before firing uh, another round off. He's not shooting at them. He's shooting away from them, trying to get the guy to back off. The vigilante then charges toward the thief with his gun still in hand. Luckily, no one was struck by a bullet. Like I said, he wasn't shooting at them. I want to be clear. We don't tolerate this kind of conduct in the New York City transit system, period, said Transit President Richard Davey uh, in a statement announcing Rhodes' arrest. Once again, cameras recorded a perpetrator, and we are grateful that the NYPD made an arrest within hours. Thank goodness nobody was hurt here, but what occurred was outrageous, reckless, and unacceptable. Roche, who officials said is known to police, was arrested within minutes of the shooting, but the gunman wrote, slipped away, and they didn't arrest him, as I said, until Wednesday. Roche was charged with attempted robbery. Rote was only nabbed after police appealed to the public by releasing the footage, um, the, the surveillance video of him, and then, as I said, was reported by, uh, by someone who knew him. Rote 43 is accused of firing off two rounds at the 49th Street Station. He was held on, uh, on $10,000 bail at the request of prosecutors during the Thursday night arraignment. Since then, he has posted bail and returned home on Friday morning. Uh, there's a video of him returning home. There's absolutely a mob scene of media there as he returned to his house. But he declined to answer any questions from the media. He did say, it's not personal, but I don't have any comment at this time. Uh, wrote, who has no criminal history and has never been described as in need of mental help, was charged with criminal possession of a weapon, criminal possession of a firearm, reckless endangerment, and menacing, as I said, in connection with the caught-on-camera shooting. He faces three and a half years in prison if convicted. New York City Transit Chief uh, uh, Davey said this is the kind of misbehavior that we will not tolerate. At Rhodes' arraignment, his defense attorney, Marie Calvert Kilbane, said her client had legally bought the gun about 13 years ago and argued that he was just a, quote, concerned citizen looking out for the safety of a fellow strap hanger. This is not someone who was buying guns on the street, added Calvert Kilbane, noting that her client was, quote, concerned for his safety and someone else's safety and reacted. Rote was really concerned for someone else, she said. Guy's a hero. Well, guy's definitely going to get uh, more time than the guy who was trying to rob the woman and God knows what else. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. It's it's New York City where uh, they tend to prosecute uh, aggressively this kind of of action. And probably the last thing they want is a bunch of vigilantes running around the subways uh, uh, protecting people because they don't think that uh, that the city and the 
the police are able to do enough uh, protection. I, I don't blame the guy one bit for have, carrying the gun with him through the subway. I'd no. certainly be doing that. Um, I don't know how serious this situation was, what that uh, guy Roche was actually capable of, but certainly in the same scenario, I think I would pull it and try and scare the guy off and maybe at least hold it until we could get police to arrive, something like that. You yeah. know, you're going to do something to try and protect her. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head that, um, you know, from their perspective, they don't, the, the, you know, they're saying the last thing you need is a bunch of vigilantes out there. Um, and, but this guy was just trying to, uh, to stop a robbery. Now, Firing the gun, you know, maybe a little bit too far. If if I had to if I had to nitpick that act, but I mean, come on, you're throwing a slew of charges at him here. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it deters people from getting involved. Well, which it, could it, save lives. It does, people, and it will, and that's exactly what uh, city government wants is to dirt, deter people from uh, from getting involved, but. Uh, but look at minimum, you know, you're talking the city with the highest concentration of Jewish population in the country. There's, uh, and I don't, I don't believe wrote was, uh, is Jewish, but, um, I saw some stat, uh, over the weekend about the enormous amount of guns purchased by Jewish Americans over the last couple of weeks and who could blame them. Right. And so there's a lot of people in New York, a city that, you know, I always felt when I lived there pretty safe. Um, in there's a lot of people uh, running around with with guns from a defensive standpoint that never would have in the past. Yeah. Well. Hey, ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's in your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through, premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now 
They're all for my listeners. A fantastic limited time deal. You get $120 off across four boxes, plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G O B B L E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Let me bring you to Memphis, Tennessee. Mempho. Home of Elvis Presley. That. Is he still living there? He's he's His house is still there, Graceland. Oh, you, you're Have you wanna, ever been to Graceland? <clears throat> you're one of the conspiracy theorists who think he's dead? <laughs> You mean the other way around, right? He's definitely dead. <clears throat> yeah, no. Definitely they dead. said he had something like 30 pounds of feces in his body when he mm. died, something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to bring you to Memphis, and we're going to tell you about something that you thought just happened in the movies. Well, this just happened in real life. These crooks must have been watching movies. The multiple cars blocked an intersection Saturday night where dozens of people broke into a FedEx semi-trailer and stole items from the inside. Memphis police say upon arrival, multiple uh, cars were quickly leaving the scene where boxes and various items were thrown all over the road. The driver of the truck reported the cars blocked the intersection and several men jumped into the back of his 53-foot FedEx trailer. He said the trailer was sealed with a safety latch, but the suspects broke the latch with an unknown tool, likely a lock cutter. Once inside the trailer, the suspects began pulling boxes off the truck. At 2.39 a.m. Sunday, officers received a phone call from a security uh, from security personnel at an apartment complex where they were advised that three men had been detained. The apartment was reportedly on lockdown and all residents were required to be inside. During the lockdown, security officers said they noticed three men sitting inside of a white car that smelled like marijuana. The security officer searched the vehicle and advised police that the three men were responsible for breaking in the FedEx truck. The suspects uh, admitted to taking the items from the truck, but told police that the items were left on the road and they picked them up. The items found inside the vehicle were four kicker speaker six by nines, one vehicle headlight, one 14 piece pot and pan set, and a cardboard box of airlines. Uh, whatever that is, a cardboard box of <laughs> airlines. Yep, uh, I'll have to I'll have to get an Amazon or something to see what that is. But yeah, no idea. Uh, and three Direct TV cable boxes. FedEx re- released a statement on Sunday regarding the incident, and they said the safety of our team members and the security of our customer shipments are top priority. And we are grateful there were no serious injuries as a result of the incident and are cooperating fully with authorities, taking the appropriate steps to address the matter. The three suspects were detained and the investigation is ongoing. But how about that? Now they're blocking off intersections in front of 18 wheelers and wait, but, but jumping in the back of the truck, <clears throat> but they had an 18 wheeler mm-hmm. that they had the pick of the litter on in terms of what they were going to take. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And they, they got pots and pans. They got, they got a kitchen set. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe they have friends that just got married or something. Uh, some speakers, some speakers, some worthless direct TV cable boxes. I mean, those things are, are, aren't worth any money. Right. Um, there had to be a lot more valuable stuff in that truck than what the, maybe they're telling the truth. Maybe they did pick up stuff on the side of the road. And the, they, they might be. I, I wondered the same thing because they got kind of the junk of the litter there. Of, I mean, that's like the worst showcase on uh, what was that called? <laughs> Price is Right. Price, that's like the bad showcase on Price is Right. Yeah. What the hell are you going to do with that? That's a great question. It sounds like something somebody saw they had and just threw on the ground oh, and then like, grabbed the good stuff, right? So, God, I, yeah, there's more to this. There's more to this. That is, uh, that is unbelievable. Well, funny, uh, we're going to go from FedEx to Amazon. And 
this is uh, this is uh, this is an amazing story. A man by the name of Uba Butler has become one of the top pranksters in the social media game. You ever hear of Uba Butler? I have not. Okay, so Uba is fearless, and sometimes he hunts big game. In his latest documentary slash mockumentary, he's hunting Amazon. It's called The Great Amazon Heist. Butler's documentary investigates the working conditions inside of Amazon. So basically, Butler concludes that conditions inside the company are horribly unfair to the workers, particularly delivery drivers for Amazon. Uh, He wanted to find a creative way, creative prank, that would draw attention to the poor conditions at Amazon. His idea (laughs) was to sell the urine of Amazon employees. Mm. Here's the genesis of the idea. Amazon is so strict with delivery targets that workers fear being written up for what is known as TOT or time off task internally at Amazon. So anything you do, like take a bathroom break, is considered TOT or time off task, like getting demerits for for doing that. So Mm. they have this environment that is really, really pushing productivity yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the extent of, uh, of someone's bladder health. It sounds like so many choose. I would get fired from there after about <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes, as many piss breaks as I well, take. or you'd be bringing a half gallon jug in here. <laughs> so, so many of the, uh, of the drivers choose to pee in bottles rather than risk a <laughs> negative on the record, like time off task. Cause That's crazy. look, if you're driving a delivery truck, to find a place to go to the back. I mean, it's not like you can yeah, ask somebody to come in there. Truck, it's a big truck. You got to find a place to park yeah. or anything. I mean, so major time off tasks. So uh, so a lot of these uh, drivers are using these uh, pee bottles. If, if piss bottles are left in the delivery vehicle, the drivers get punished for leaving the vehicle a mess, right? <laughs> well, I can so, understand that. So instead, the drivers usually throw these piss bottles out of their truck windows just before they enter the fulfillment centers. <laughs> so like the roads leading into Christ. the fulfillment centers on the sides of the road are filled with driver piss bottles. Wow. So Uba decided to take the worker's urine from those discarded bottles, repackage it and sell it on Amazon. Listen to what he did. He oh, labeled man. it as a reusable energy drink with a bitter lemon flavor. And called it release. <laughs> Get the pun? Release. Can't make that up. Uh, and when you look at the logo of the bottle, I'm going to show Jim the logo now. Um, <laughs> you see how they've made it look kind of like a penis. And then they have stuff coming out the pee hole at the front. So, okay, so there's the logo. Wow. And then yeah. you're at the top and then you yeah. have it like that, right? So We'll post that. Um, so, uh, but it's it's subtle. It's not, it doesn't scream penis at you. You have to be really looking at it to figure out uh, what they've done there. Anyway, Uba got friends in, inside uh, uh, friends he made at Amazon to purchase the reusable energy drink and to leave five-star reviews. So we got a bunch of people to do this. It went so well that the drink soared to the number one spot in its no. category on Amazon. So when you're the number one drink on Amazon and any product line, your product then gets driven algorithmically and becomes a front and center product across the entire platform. So Amazon unknowingly is promoting the living shit out of this guy's prank on the company's working condition. So, uh, uh, so is this a crime? Well, Yes, obviously it's a crime, but is Amazon going to do anything about it? Thus far, Amazon has removed release energy from its site, but not put out any sort of public statement, uh, although they have responded to some direct media inquiries. When questioned about the prank, an Amazon spokesperson said that this was, quote, a crude stunt and that Amazon has, quote, industry leading tools to prevent genuinely unsafe products from being listed. Well, Those tools didn't prevent this stunt from happening. The product was listed for only a few days. This was a stunt. He wasn't trying to get uh, people in the public to drink a bunch of piss. Butler's documentary is a a shocking expose of Amazon's 
uh, alleged treatment of its workers and how vulnerable they actually are to scams. It raises questions about how much we trust online platforms and how much we value human dignity. Butler says that he hopes his documentary will make people think twice before they buy something on Amazon or go to work for them. He says that he wants to show people that there is more to life than just convenience and cheap prices. Wow. Release. What did he call it? He called it an energy, uh, a reusable energy drink. Well, you know, with a bitter lemon flavor. And I've I've heard some things about Amazon and their their strict working conditions. And one of them is their. Uh, I want to say I saw it. I may have saw a documentary on this, but their pull time, the time in which they have to pull an order. You know, they got people that zoom around them things with the uh, skateboards and all that stuff. Tricycles? Oh, yeah. They don't have the tricycles. Well, they probably got those too, but but all kinds of different contraptions in order to speed up their pool time uh, because your pay is affected. Um, so everything uh, you know in Amazon's system is based around time. Obviously, when you've got a prime plan where – you know, you order it at your, at your house the next day it's or the day. Logistics. Yeah, it's an, a, and it really is a, a a marvel what they've been able to do logistically with that company. I always said that when Amazon went to that two day free shipping with that Prime membership, it was the most genius, probably business move anybody's ever made if they could pull it off, and they did. And it's amazing. It all started with books, yeah. but. But I think, that, I, books, think, yeah. I think that we're going to have to uh, hold Woody to a little time off task. Yeah, he gets a TOT t- to merit. I hope board <laughs> board members, if you're listening this morning, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Very good. Uh, so don't look for that drink on Amazon. It no longer exists. Fortunately, I would say, Mike. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take a swig of that. No. You can now take off that belt and move freely around the cabin. That's right. We're switching it up. I know. I'm I'm, I'm freaking him out. (laughs) We're going to do a mile high crime. Look, we sometimes we switch these segments up, and this one's so good. I'm like, I ought to do this just right now, and not make. I know y'all been waiting the whole show to hear Tiffany's voice. Uh, So we're going to do the mile high for Wednesday, and a Delta crew member threatened to remove a passenger who repeatedly tried to sing her new gospel song on a flight. Now, this is actually interesting because this lady is a legit singer. Okay. Um, So I'm going to get into this for you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it first. The passenger, whose name is Bobby Storm, took to Instagram on Saturday to share a video of an altercation between her and a Delta crew member. In the video, Storm walked up the aisle before she was told to sit down. The video showed her taking her seat and turning to the people around her to tell them she had just found out she was up for two Grammys and have released a new single titled We Can't Forget Him. So before we get into the details of today's Mile High Crime, I want you to listen to the clip of the incident. It's going to tell you a lot. So we're going to play the clip right here. I don't need anything. I need you by my side. Shine your light up. I know. Oh, Lord. I try to pretend I can do it without you. But I'll be out of my mind. Yes or no answer, please. Am I going to go to jail if I don't? 
can you please answer my question? Are you willing and able to be quiet right now? I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do. I'm asking you a question, yes or no. I'm your flight leader. I need you to follow my instruction. Okay. My instruction for you to answer my question. Are you able to be quiet? What right do you guys now? think? I'm asking you, ma'am. I'm asking you guys. What do you guys okay. think? Okay. If you're not able to, be, to follow my instruction, yeah. you will not be taking this flight. Uh, okay. Are so you able to be asking. quiet? If that's the case, then that's fine. If you were the so person that's yes. in charge of it all. I'm your flight leader, yes. If you're the person in charge okay. of it all, then that's okay. fine. Okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Now, Storm uh, was featured as a vocalist on what's known as Maverick City Music's latest Grammy-nominated album, which was called The Maverick Way Complete. The band is a Christian singing group nominated for Best Gospel Album and Best Contemporary Christian Music Performance. I sing for the Lord, Storm said in the video you just heard. Shortly after that, the Delta crew member approached Storm and told her to be quiet. I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do, she exclaimed. The crew member repeatedly asked Storm in the video whether she could just sit quietly during the flight. If you're not going to follow my instruction, you you will not be able to take this flight, the employee continued. While Storm appeared to concede at first, when the crew member walked away, she continued to sing in a low tone. And in a follow-up video, Storm said Delta had reached out but didn't uh, but that she added she didn't want the employee to be reprimanded. I simply want us to keep in mind how we treat each other, she said. Now, dozens of comments on Storm's post uh, called the singer out. They accused her of being out of order. Several commented that the employee was just doing his job and that some passengers may not want to listen to somebody singing on a flight. <laughs> There, this has been a year of unruly passengers with numerous people being kicked off flights, as you, you know, we report to you on this segment. In June, a Delta flight had to make an unscheduled uh, landing after a uh, passenger became unruly. So this is something that's becoming more and more common. Um, so we're going to post the actual video on Facebook of this incident, and I want to get your thoughts. Y'all tell us what you think if you think Storm was out of line or you think that the Delta employee was out of line on this scenario. So look for that. But that is our mile high crime. Wow, that is a that is an interesting mile high. I mean, on on one hand, um, you know, I can understand where, you know, let's say it's not a really talented gospel singer. It's a bad stand-up comedian. <laughs> then it's worse. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and uh, that bad stand-up comedian says, I just got nominated for two comedy awards. Do you want to hear a little bit of my, uh, of my bit of my act? Right. And some people in a few chairs around him say, yeah, sure. And all of a sudden, you know, he's doing stand-up, which is probably blue. Yeah. Um, very different than singing gospel, but right. Same sort of thing. So I, I think, in terms of training your employees, you probably would train them, you know, to uh, to not allow this kind of thing, and then maybe you know leave a little bit of subjectivity there for someone to look at a situation and decide whether what's happening is actually a good thing. And you know, I mean, in this case, somebody legit uh, singer, I mean. somebody. Uh, 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 you know, doing a little bit of, uh, of of beautiful Christian music for people who've said they want to hear it. What's the harm? I mean, if, right. pas- if passengers were, were saying no, I mean, if the vote yeah. was 50, 50 or yeah. something like that, then you'd probably have to stop it. But I mean, so many of these people these days, they, they get a little bit of authority and they, they, they they lose uh, you know all objectivity and and uh, and and judgment. So um, you want to sing? You can come over here and sing. <laughs> she can sing on our show anytime. But listen to that, y'all. Watch the uh, Facebook and let us know your thoughts. Say goodbye to us, Tiffany. You can now take off that belt and move freely around the cabin. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. 
The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut, soy, vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And common like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Growing your business can mean big time logistical questions. Like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Uber Direct helps you give your customers what they want when they want it. Offer them delivery options in under two hours, on the same day, or scheduled up to 30 days in advance. Plus, share real-time tracking and ETAs by text. You can keep growing your business at a price that works for you. Never pay commission or hidden charges. Just pay a fixed fee per delivery. Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com. Well, let's go to Los Angeles. LA. Some interesting stuff happening in Los Angeles right now. Um, did you happen to notice on the news over the weekend, Jim, the big fire and freeway closure? I did LA? not see really? that. I'm, okay. I, I did not. Well, this is big. So the the I ten the I ten that runs uh, through Louisiana here mm-hmm. runs uh, coast to coast yep. all the way from uh, Santa Monica to somewhere in northern Florida, maybe it's Jacksonville or St Augustine, something something like that. And the ten freeway is absolutely. Uh, I think it's probably the second most traveled freeway in Los Angeles, one of the most traveled freeways in uh, the country and an essential freeway if you live or work downtown Los Angeles. Well, the uh, the freeway had a fire uh, underneath it on Saturday, just after midnight, 1220 AM, the fire broke out and this fire got to be so bad that it literally melted the I-10 freeway above it at a a major, major uh, intersection point for uh, that freeway at Alameda Street, downtown Los Angeles. Right. I mean, a unbelievably heavily trafficked location, right? And, uh, and this is not uh, like the situation here, I actually was able to drive the I-55 North today. They've got that thing fixed, and I was able to get here. So it took us about two weeks here to fix this problem that happened on the I-55 in Louisiana. This is going to be uh, months, yeah, um, and and you know, cost a ton of money. But what I found really interesting is, you know, I still 
subscribe to a bunch of the same news feeds that I subscribed to when I was in uh, California because I keep up with so many people there. And uh, and so I I start seeing these headlines, the L.A. Times, 10 freeway closed in downtown L.A., the L.A. Daily News. Dreading L.A.'s 10 freeway closure? Consider taking a bus. The AP, I-10 fire has closed a vital part of the Los Angeles freeway. CNN, Los Angeles braces for a transportation crisis. NBC LA, alternate routes for drivers in wake of I-10 freeway closure. So, and and I Google quick, and I mean, three pages into Google before I learn or see anything about where this fire came from. Right. And, uh, and so you, know, you might ask, where did it come from? And, uh, and you won't find an answer in any of those articles I just cited, but, uh, but on Sunday, a, uh, a press conference was held and the LA city fire chief, Kristen Crowley spoke, and she referred to it as a quote, rubbish fire that was started underneath the I-10 freeway in downtown LA. She said that two wooden pallets within a 200 by 200 storage yard initially caught fire and soon the entire storage yard was engulfed in flames. She said that the winds, which were apparently heavy that night, blew the flames across uh, the street onto the uh, another storage yard on the other side of the road and, uh, and it, ripped, it ripped through those two storage lots in a uh, – uh, in that industrial area, it burned parked cars, it burned stacks of wooden pallets and support poles for high-tension power lines. The uh, storage yard was supposedly sublet from a leasee that had uh, had to fold their business that had occupied the space originally, and it was unclear whether any new business had been operating out of the yard. The cause of the fire remained under investigation. No injuries were reported. Um, more than 160 firefighters from more than two dozen companies responded to the blaze. This was all the substance of her press conference on Sunday. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom stepped in later in the day, and he declared a state of emergency for the state uh, and directed the State Department of Transportation to request assistance from the federal government. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass said she also talked to the U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg about additional resources that may be needed. The governor said Sunday that the state had been in litigation with the owner of the business that was leasing the storage property where the fire started, that that lease is expired, Newsom said, and the business had been in arrears uh, while subletting, uh, subleasing the space. Quote, this is a site we are aware of. This is a leasee we were aware of, he said. Now, as a 20-year California resident who fled the state because of its ubiquitous dysfunction and dishonesty of its leadership, I'm here to tell you that this is almost certainly bullshit. <laughs> um, so as the weekend went on, people in Los Angeles uh, that I'm in regular communication with started sharing different um, things with me. And so how do I know that uh, – how do I know that this is bullshit? I know it's bullshit because I know – what every person who lives in LA and drives along the I 10 downtown knows. Um, and that's exactly what's underneath this uh, freeway, which is it might've at some point been leased out as a storage area, but it is a number of major homeless encampments. It's encampment after encampment. In fact, hundreds of pictures of the quote storage yard uh, started circulating on social media Sunday, really a little bit on, on Saturday. And still, there hadn't been anything that I could find in the press prior to that that uh, that talked about the homeless homeless encampments. Finally, Mayor Bass said that at least sixteen homeless people living underneath the highway were evacuated and brought to shelters. But officials, uh, but she was quick to say that quote there are no immediate indications that the blaze began at the encampment. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. So, sixteen that you had to bring in, which means one hundred and sixty others fled, and you didn't get to them to help them to hospitals. What else underneath a freeway in the middle of the night 
goes ablaze for nothing. I mean, come, give me a break. Um, there's no indication that, uh, uh, you know, so that's like, yeah, there's no indication that Dallas isn't a nice place to visit in November, Mrs. Kennedy. I mean, give me a break. Uh, <laughs> the mayor said that the fire's long-term impact could be reminiscent of the damage from the Northridge earthquake that flattened freeways back in 1994. Unfortunately, there's no reason to think that this is going to be over in a couple of days, she said. I've got a buddy who uh, who lives uh, immediately above the 405 freeway, and it's like a mountain. It's a hill or a mountain, whatever you want to call it, but it's it's in an area known as the Sepulveda Pass, which is where the 405 passes through the mountains. About 10 years ago, a fire started in a small homeless encampment at the base of uh, the mountain that he lives atop of, and the flames climbed the mountain literally in minutes. Uh, uh, firefighters were... Uh, rung uh, his front doorbell at three o'clock in the morning and they had no idea, but their entire property was surrounded with, uh, uh, with flames. It happens that fast. Luckily they got a, uh, uh, a, a wind shift for just a little uh, period of time there that allowed them to put the, you know, they put all this protective stuff around. They can, they can isolate a structure and put a, uh, uh, I don't even know what you call it. This going. Yeah. The, the, a Blast. protective ring around, uh, around it. They saved his, uh, his house that night. But, you know, so, you know, maybe this storage area is where, uh, uh, is where Newsom took all the homeless that he magically removed from the streets of San Francisco over the weekend because the Chinese government is coming to visit San Francisco. And so they cleaned up the city. So it looks good for the Chinese, which really important that San Francisco looks good for the Chinese. So maybe he brought them down to LA. I don't know, but it's, uh, you know, look, it, it's neither kind nor sympathetic to offer sanctuary via drug dens, uh, uh, uh these encampments, et cetera, to these people, they need real treatment. I, I don't know when we're going to get to an understanding of that. This is, uh, Thankfully, an incident that didn't cause any deaths, but it's going to cost that city probably north of a billion dollars and going to cost uh, motorists in Los Angeles an unbelievable amount of headache. Wow. There you go. Oh. I get to do a kinky crime today. Woody, woody, woody. Yes, Time yes, off yes. task costs you a kinky crime. I don't oh. know. The board may evaluate the whole <laughs> segment to see what happens. All right. We're going to bring you a kinky crime for Wednesday. And look, it Veterans Day. First of all, shout out to all of our vets uh, out there. Saturday was Veterans Day. Um, and I know some places celebrated it Friday as far as taking off of work, and some did it Monday. Their businesses were closed, just depended on It your really business. threw me for a loop because I thought it was always Monday. I don't know why I thought. I mean, so because we didn't mention anything uh, on the show on Friday, right. and I felt horrible once I saw that, and then yeah. I saw that you had posted a couple of things. But, I mean, for me, it never even occurred to me because I – was you wouldn't it was think the, it would be on a weekend. It, typically not, but it was this this past. And hey, we, you know, we mentioned it on Facebook, but a Las Vegas strip club actually went a step further. Oh my god, it. that's right. They offer free lap dances to military members on Veterans Day, taking care of the vets. Yeah, to see thank that. you for your full service. And thank you for your service. <laughs> An America loving Las Vegas strip club honored vets. This past Saturday for Veterans Day by offering free lap dances to current and former military members. Managers at Sin City's world famous Crazy Horse 3 announced the Bump and Grind giveaway this past week. Unveiling a frisky flyer for the patriotic promotion featuring a, bl a busty blonde in a skimpy star spangled bikini. Uh, Honoring those who served. Complimentary lap dance for all veterans in active duty. The off-strip titty bar provided the free dances between midday and 6 p.m. on Saturday. 
hoping to turn the federal holiday into a full-blown bonanza. Yeah, I see what Crazy like Horse 3 also offered free entry to the establishment for any Nevada resident over the age of 21. Lap dances at the establishment usually run around $20 before tips, meaning brave servicemen and women saved a pretty penny with the promo. We will make sure that we post the original ad today on the Facebook page at Real Life Real Crime Daily because it really is meant to uh, catch the eyes of the vets. Yes, Let's she just put it that looks way. like a great American. But sh- hey, shout out to the crazy horse for uh, honoring our vets. Absolutely. In, in a kinky Thursday, way. In a kinky way. So that was your kinky crime for Wednesday. I hope all you vets got to go that are in the Vegas area or maybe you're visiting. I'm sure they all do. can't be as good as a landing strip, but possibly well, there's no, no place like the no landing comparison. strip. <laughs> Give me some banjos, Jim. I've got a little twist today on our typical dumb criminals segment. I'm calling it smart lawyer, dumb criminal. Dang, that's a twist and a half. Well, this smart lawyer became a dumb criminal. A hotshot Texas lawyer bought a box of very expensive cigars and decided to insure them against, from amongst other things, fire. Within a month, he had smoked them all and promptly filed a claim against his insurance company. In the claim, the lawyer stated that the cigars were lost in a series of, quote, small fires. The insurance company refused to pay the claim, citing the obvious reason that the man had consumed the cigars in the normal fashion. The lawyer sued them and won. Hmm. Rather than endure a long and expensive process to appeal the ruling, the insurance company accepted the verdict and paid $15,000 to the lawyer for the loss of his cigars. After the lawyer cashed the check, the insurance company had him arrested on 24 counts of arson. The lawyer was convicted of intentionally burning the insured property and was sentenced to 24 months in jail and a $24,000 fine. How about a special banjo serenade for our brilliant yes, counselor? Yes, that brilliant counselor needs it. Wow. There's a certain amount of debate online whether this is uh, folklore within the legal trade or an actual story. And there's about 50% uh, of the folks on Reddit who uh, who believe this actually happened and 50% who believe it's legal folklore. But it's... Uh, it's an entertaining story nonetheless, and uh, the smart Alec attorney got beat by the smarter Alec insurance company. Absolutely did. And no Woody Overton showed today. Well, unless he's out in the parking lot uh, cleaning a deer or something like Could that. Be. We're going to follow up. Well, we will do know. everything we can to uh, resurrect him and find out uh, – his locale. Should we hit Hooters first? Jim, or should we go first? <laughs> that might be the first place. Okay, let's look. go to Hooters first, and we'll take it from there. We'll we'll give you a report online. That's right. Where in the world is All Woody right. Overton? Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman, and I'm Mike Agavina, your host of Real Life Real Crime Daily. Peace. Wow, I did peace, Woody. I don't know. Growing your business can mean big-time logistical questions, like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then, drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com. Build up to Black Friday with savings all month long at Lowe's. Get up to 50% off select major appliances. Plus take an additional 10% off when you buy select major appliances. And don't wait to pick up holiday inflatables under $20. Don't wait to save. In store or online now. Because Lowe's knows deals. Valid 11.6 through 12.4. Cannot be combined with additional discounts. See Lowe's.com for details and qualifying items while supplies last.